Hi guys, it's Shalom. So real quick, I wanted to talk a bit about um, <clears throat> some of the differences in American money versus Nigerian money. Okay. Um, <clears throat> part of why I'm making this is because there's this hype that happens when companies get funded or, you know, they raise a certain amount of money or all these companies are valued at a certain price or et cetera, et cetera. You know, valuations are a big deal right now and have been for a little while. And I've always had a problem with that. Here's my problem with it is that <clears throat> one, when people get funded, they seem to be praised. You know, there's, there's companies out there that are getting funded and their CEOs are featured on XYZ as you know, the ABC of <laughs> this, that, and the other, meaning they get praised. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. They get praised for raising all this capital when they're losing their own company, you know, and this is specifically for black owned companies. That's what I'm talking about. You know, black owned companies get funded and essentially you just become a slave again. You know, you, you have no control of your company in essence. And they know what I'm talking about. But so that's one. <clears throat> Two has to do with valuations. So you get funded a million dollars and then you're valued at five to ten. Uh, yeah, that makes no sense to me. Uh, specifically coming from Nigeria where everything we have, we own cash and carry. You know. You have your house, we own it cash. We built it. All the cars, we own it cash. We built it. When someone has a million dollars or uh, um, makes a million dollars, it's that's liquid. It's not a valuation. So I have, I tend to have built this lack of respect for people and companies who say they're millionaires, but they only have hundred thousand dollars cash and they're valued at a million dollars, or you know. They only have a million dollars liquid and they're valued at X, Y, Z. And you have companies that are they're worth valuation wise billions of dollars when they don't have that liquid. I come from a society and a community where we are just cash and carry people. You know, you know, if you tell me, say this one now million dollars, you know, get them self. Yeah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. So I respect my Nigerian money more than I do. The dollar, because at least what we own, we own. You know, that's that's. I talk about this often, right? You know, slavery and and, and that's a huge part of it. You know, um, most Americans are slaves. You know, you don't you don't really own nothing. You know, the car you drive, you have a monthly payment on it. The house you live in, you have a mortgage on it. The clothes you wear. You have to pay credit card bills. You know, those that doesn't sound to me like a successful country or a successful person. You know, your debt is way over leveraged. And yeah, I just come from a community. I'm grateful for uh, parents who listen, they just cash and carry people. To this day, my dad, he doesn't usually will not buy shit. If he's not paying for a cash, his car is all cash. You know, the stuff we own is pretty much cash because that's what they're used to. And it's a habit. And I get the point of, you know, the ability to have or have access to money to, to, to pull from when necessary is, is, is beautiful. It's a great thing. Not that we don't have that in Nigeria, but usually, I mean, you have more than enough cash. You, to cover it and you, you might just be choosing to for some reason take it you know uh, whether it's a loan or credit so that's my take on you know american dollar versus the nigerian naira you know you can you can have that debate with me about you know the forex trading points right now in terms of well it's worth this much and yeah we can have that debate but my point is really more of a Nigerian who has a million dollars 
has a million dollars liquid. You know, um, a Nigerian business or company that is worth a billion dollars has a billion dollars. Not here where you have all these tech companies that they don't even make money. They, all these companies are running on a loss and yet all these people are being praised and, and recognized for pretty much being in debt. You know, let's look at the Forbes reports. You know, people will brag about their Forbes 30 under 30 or this, that, and the other when, ah, eh, like, I could tell you a lot of people who should probably be on that list more than the people that are on it who are doing way better financially. You know, and so it, it's just all a media marketing game and if you don't play the game then you don't get on it but for me it's not about that it's about actually making real money you know not being in debt some of these companies will not have they don't have at this point there's a lot of black companies that we've been praising for a while here in the states who don't have a say in their companies anymore so what does that again do to the black community in america no ownership Still slave, still in debt. It's just the way it goes. You know, look at the college debt crisis. People are not talking about it now, but pff, within the next year or two, it's going to be, that's that's the reason for the bubble. That's the reason why the, the economy is going to crash. You know? And so it's this recurring thing. Um, and it is a very much an American thing. You know, that's just the way the, the, the system here is set up. So, again, going back to that, it is a system, and that's just the way it's set up. But, you know, I again, I'm just speaking from my personal experience and my background, you know, growing up in Nigeria. And we just don't operate like that, you know. If you don't have the money, you ain't got the money. But, you know, you'll see a lot of Nigerians and Africans Stunting, whether it's on the gram or YouTube, with the cars, with the houses, those are all paid for, buddy. All paid for. No loans here. You get me? So, yeah, the idea of being valued at XYZ or raising a certain amount of money, that's just absurd to me. You know, it's just absurd to me. And I don't think people should be praised for that. Rather, maybe they should be just educated on, hey, listen, you you raised, um, you raised a million dollars, you raised X amount of money, and how much equity did you give up? You know, how much of a say do you really have when your, your company is running on a negative for quite a number of years, and then you raise more money? Like, you're losing more and more control and losing more and more ownership and then it's just a recurring cycle of people staying in debt and ultimately staying in slavery. So that's my take. Shalom. If you like what I'm talking about or don't, well, uh, subscribe to the channel anyways, and I'll be giving my take on more of this. So that's that.